Fraser and I'm an artist who specialises in wood turning and freehand pyrography. I was brought up in Glen App Estate near Ballantrae where my parents who were both artists loved to use the wood which was available in the forests and the beaches nearby. Because I've been surrounded by wood throughout my life I feel a natural affinity with it. It's because of this affinity that I can feel what should be created from each piece of wood. I get great pleasure from the knowledge that I have created something meaningful from what would otherwise just decompose or be used for firewood. I'm known for creating a variety of products complemented with freehand pyrography. These can range from large bowls and driftwood vases to bookmarks and jewellery, and I'm always willing to consider commission pieces. I'm often asked, who turns your bowls? As many people still consider this a man's domain, but I'm pleased to say I'm responsible for every part of the process from choosing the raw material to completing the finished piece. Hi, my name's Linda Irving and I'm a fine artist living out on the Mill of Galloway. My primary medium is felt, wet felt making, and I also use sketchbooks and collage to form ideas. Living out on the Mull of Galloway, um, the ever-changing light and the ever-changing colours is absolutely beautiful and this inspires my work greatly. So just a little bit about my process. I work onto white pre-felt and in my hand I would have an array, of my palette of colours. Most of my colours, as you can see behind me, are pre-dyed. But I do get some specials dyed for me and my local friendly Glenda Waterworth. So we would tease the fibres out and I would lay them down like watercolour by layering. So if I was laying out the sky, I would lay it out and add colours to it. By the time this picture would be laid out, the height of it would probably be about an inch. You wouldn't see any of the white pre-felt can see how things can be layered up to create tones running through. And this is the way that I would lay out a seascape like this. Hello, I'm Glenda Waterworth and I call myself a multidisciplinary artist because I paint, I'm a trained bookbinder, and my most recent work involves the use of dyeing silk and using silk to create um, translucent sheets of paper which I lay over my paintings. I like to use a lot of texture in my paintings, so I'll often incorporate collage layers or I'll include um, artist mediums such as um, glass bead gel or texture pastes, even polyfiller. And I love to contrast that with more fluid media such as inks or very um, fluid paints and the I love the dynamic that you get, the contrast that you get where the fluid media settles into the crevices and the, the areas of texture that have been created. I'm surrounded by inspiration living here by the sea as well as the colours of the sea we've got the beautiful big skies and the amazing green hills of Galloway which just provide endless inspiration in their colours and shapes. So even if my paintings aren't particularly representative, those colours and shapes and forms have definitely made their way into my paintings. I think the landscape, you know, as you drive around the rims because we're surrounded by the sea, mm -hmm. I get this kind of imprint. So, you know, of, of seeing the... Uh, the waves and the sea and the colours and the light changing yeah. and I have this imprint and so I can sit down and I can make a landscape like this Me just too. from the feeling of yeah. being in the area. Well that's that's what I'm always trying to convey anyway is the feeling. Skies, I love skies. 
I love trees. Mm. That's what I notice when I'm driving. <laughs> and I've lived here most of my life and the scenery still takes my breath away. So a lot of people talk about St Ives and Cornwall's having this amazing special light. And it's a similar thing. Cornwall's sort of got a lot of sea bouncing our light around. And I think we've got even more, um, especially in the summer with the long nights. Mm -hmm. I think it's just much amazing. more raw here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know, you, and, and like Maybe. you say, one minute I can be sat here and all of a sudden I can turn around and look out the window and the, the light and everything has completely changed. Yeah, yeah. The thing I love is when when you get those stormy days but with some in sunny intervals and you get that shaft of light coming through the clouds or you get the, the fields lit up in that vivid, vivid green with yeah. a grey cloud over the top. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. And then I, d I do laugh sometimes because I can be sat here and I could be sketching out the window or even taking a mental note and the farmer will come along and they'll put all these lovely lines on the field so the landscape changes yeah. instantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we get that too. It's your colour palette that I think is interesting. It's bright and vibrant like you. I think working with colour, it just feeds the soul. And this is the ideal place to do it because well, we were saying before, weren't we, about mm. the changing light yeah. and the colours. And yeah, a lot of my work is abstract, so it, it doesn't necessarily represent the landscape, it will, not the external landscape, a lot of it's about the inner landscape. It's, um, yeah, colours are a key thing. And a lot of my work is more monochrome. I mm. like black and white. But you're very connected to nature. Yeah. You always have been. You come from a very um, nurtured, natural world background. So you've always been connected to nature and the woods. And I think trees. growing up with my dad being in the forestry, you know, that's where my love of wood has come from. Mm. I think growing up with my dad being connected to the brewery has done me some good. I really like the fact that you can blend fibres, the way you can blend watercolour. Mm. And the nice thing is that because the fibres are opaque, that if you was to put down a colour and you didn't like it, you can go over the top of it with yeah. another colour. And usually it obliterates it. Of course it helps to have good materials to start with, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Beautiful oh yeah, where locks. do your materials come from? <laughs> Beautiful locks dyed by Glenda. Beautiful ah. fibre dyed by Glenda. <laughs> by local. Yeah, well, it's about as local as you can get. <laughs> where did your wood come from? My wood comes from the beaches and in the woodlands. So I like to find the wood rather than buy it. And do you know where every every piece has come from? I do. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know every piece of wood that I've got. Brilliant. So if it's found wood then, what sort of wood is it in general? Um, well, a, a lot, mixture? It's a mixture. You know, a lot of the wood um, comes from the beaches, so you don't really know what you're getting. Um, you know, but I love that silvery. Um, driftwood look and then you uncover this lovely honey coloured wood underneath. This one I'm working on just now is a piece of acacia. Um, I get quite a lot of my wood from Logan um, Botanic Gardens. So you never cut trees down here? No. no. Oh gosh, no. No, I don't shear my own sheep either. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's not happening. Some days I arrive home and there's a tree that's been dropped in my driveway. <laughs> now I try and think, how am I going to move that?